Now, when considering one of the most recognizable and reinterpreted designs in all of watchmaking, the Flieger is in a short list of ones that come to mind. It's a watch styling that is rooted in military action, yet still finds everyday functionality today. And in this video, we look at the history behind these pieces and the best Flieger watches that you can buy today. Let's jump into the review. Now, if you're already familiar with the history of Flieger watches, go ahead and jump forward. I'm gonna have more of like a list-oriented video at the end of this, but I think it's important to really appreciate these pieces to look at the backstory. And few watches have met the standards of a wearer's need like the Flieger. An important note to mention here as they begin to tell the story of what these watches are, tools. But to tell the full story here, we have to go back to the mid-1930s. The German Air Force was given a reboot, the Luftwaffe, and the need for accurate and legible timepieces were needed on the wrist of navigators. The watches were needed both in great numbers and in their need to execute specific criteria. So before we look at that criteria, I think it's important to look at the two different differentiating dials that were commonly used during this period. Now you may have heard of phrases like the Type A and the Type B when looking at Beware watches. The Type A were first released in 1940 and had a short run being issued to German navigators, and then were followed up with the longer standing Type Bs, which started production in 1941. The key differentiator in the designs were the display of the numerals on the dial. The Type As featured the display of classic hour markings along the outside of the dial, apart from the triangular loom marker with two dots taking place at the 12 to help with orientation. And the Type B on the other hand, featured instead of hour numerals towards the outside of the dial, at the center of the dial, with each five minute increments being displayed on the outside of the dial. So this display became favored as an easier way for navigators to quickly identify the time at the minute, given the precise nature of their work. As an example, in combat, the navigator would be issued a watch before flight. Once in the air, the navigator would receive a signal to synchronize their watch in order to give the proper commands to the pilot and ensure perfect timing with the rest of the air fleet during bombings. Upon returning to land for the mission, the navigators would return their watch. So th through that process, being exact to the minute and looking at the display of the minutes on the outside of the dial was a lot easier to look at from just maybe a quick glance within the cockpit. But with this process in place, the watches shared these common traits. So these were tested chronometers. As accuracy was crucial, when going about these missions and communicating to the pilot to have precise timing. In addition, they had to have hacking seconds. So when you pull out the crown, the second hand will stop. This will allow when they get that signal to be able to synchronize their clock efficiently. The watches also showcase a Breguet balance spring in their watches. They featured large cases, help with wearing them over flight jackets and having great legibility. 55 millimeters was the standard here. The watches also showcase large crowns for the ability to activate the crowns with gloves in the cockpit, and most of them had an onion style crown. In addition, they had long leather straps, which made it easy to go over that flight jacket with that 55 millimeter case. Very similar to what you'll find with diver extensions on divers to go over a wetsuit. It's a very similar kind of action here. And then all the watches were engraved, indicating that flight and the navigation on all the watches. In total, there were dozens of companies that were providing watches to the Germans during the war. However, when looking at the watches that were actually issued and looking at Fliegers, there's really only five brands that were responsible. And those brands were Laco, Stova, Vempi, Langa, and IWC. Four of the brands being German, with the other IWC, of course, residing in Switzerland. And despite these watches being very highly coveted in terms of collectors, and many of them being produced, I mean, there were some examples out there, the results of them not being privately owned did bring forth a little bit of issues and just seeing really a lot of examples out there because upon returning, those navigators would return their watches. So finding good examples, if you wanna find one, we're talking thousands of dollars if you wanna find one from the original five. But fortunately, if you want a piece of history, you actually don't have to go digging for those original examples as a few of the original five brands still produce great numbers of Flieger watches as well as several other brands that have taken up productions of these iconic designs. And to start here, I think it's only appropriate to look at those iconic brands that were making these watches even back in the World War II era. And for our first brand here, we have Laco. Laco was founded in 1925 in Germany, and during the early 1940s when they were supplying watches, the watches actually featured in-house calibers from the brand. 
Now the brand is still offering one of the widest selection of Flieger watches in the world, but as an important note here, Laco has experienced changing in ownership a couple times throughout the years since World War II. Yet they still try to specialize in the watches that help put them on the map at their start. And I actually reached out to Laco prior to making this video and they were actually nice enough to send me some of their watches a feature here. And now the first watch we have here, we have four different watches available here. We have the Laco Heidelberg. So price here, we're looking at $1,130, case size of 39 millimeters, case thickness of 12.15 millimeters, movement is an automatic ETA 28242, water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. So you're getting a elevated ETA movement here. This particular watch coming with that classic A-type style dial with the hours indicated on the outside of the dial and the triangular center point at the 12. Now contrasting that with another variation, we have the Laco Paderborn. Coming in with a price of 1,130, case size of 42 millimeters, thickness of 12.8 millimeters, also getting an automatic ETA 28242, water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. So this one is a type B with the minutes surrounding the outside of the dial, small hour hand that aligns with the inner hour markings at the center of the dial. So these two watches reflect I think those two vintage inspired styles that would be issued during this period. You also have the Laco Venedig Abstuck with a price of $2,350, case size of 42 millimeters, case thickness of 12.8 millimeters, movement automatic ETA 282042, water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. So these watches are a little bit more unique. They were released at Basel World 2019. Both type A and type B dial configurations are available. And of course, upon looking at these watches, they showcase faux patina and have a case that kind of have a sense of age. I'm not sure if this option would be the one I would opt for, but really cool to see this being offered. And I think for those people that maybe want to go for that vintage look, I know there's a lot of people that covet those vintage inspired Fliegers and Pilot watches. This could definitely fit the bill. And then finally, the great thing about Laco and of course the next brand that we're going to be mentioning here is just the flexibility in terms of price. Uh, this watch here, the Laco Augsburg, is coming in with a price of $410, case size of 39 millimeters, case thickness of 11.5 millimeters, movement is an automatic Miyota 821A, so that's a decorated uh, Miyota 8215, water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. Of course, this style with the blue dial is gonna be much different than what was issued back in World War II, but you also have that black dial variation. This one featuring a Miyota movement makes this a little bit more accessible in terms of price, so if somebody wants a watch uh, that is, of course, from a brand that's been producing these watches for decades, you have the opportunity to do it at a more accessible price. Now, our next brand is Stova. They're hailing from the Black Forest in southwest part of Germany, and I've just been a fan of their watches for some time. I've actually done a complete review of this first watch that we're gonna be looking at. I did a giveaway of this watch uh, as well. Uh, so linked in the description if you've not seen that review, and the watch is the Stova Fleer Classic 40. So price, we're looking at $995, case size of 40 millimeters, thickness of 10.2 millimeters, movement is an automatic ETA 282042. This looks to appear to be a top grade ETA, water resistance of 50 meters, crystal is sapphire, very simple type A style dial, and just a classic Flieger if you wanna go for something very simple. On the other hand, if you want something very similar but with a different dial configuration, more to that type B style, you can go with the Stova Flieger Ballmuster B. This watch coming at the same price of $995. Case size again, 40 millimeters, 10.2 thickness, automatic ETA 2824 movement, water resistance 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. And the great thing about Stova, apart from of course their, you know, I think really well-valued watches, uh, really well-constructed watches, is the fact that you get to customize them a good bit. And you can choose, you know, if you wanna have a logo, date window, as well as even customizing the actual movements inside of them. So you can go for automatics or manual winding, and in my review, I, I specified that I think the manual might just be the way to go, partially just because of that onion style crown. It just feels good to actually engage and use uh, the watch and use that hand winding movement. Uh, it just feels natural with these watches and what, of course, Navigator was doing many years ago. And our third watch brand that still embody a lot of those designs from the 1940s is IWC, of course. And the Schaffhausen Switzerland brand has been making watches in 1868. Their first pilot watch being introduced back in 1936 and unlike some of the other manufacturers, IWC actually offered watches for both the Allied and Axis powers during World War II. And when focusing in on their watches, I think there are just a few models that I want to look at here that offer the best contemporary interpretation of the original designs. The first is the IWC Mark 18 Heritage. 
So this watch comes in with a price of $4,350, case size 40 millimeters, thickness of 10.8 millimeters. Uh, you're getting a 60 meters of water resistance, crystal is sapphire, blasted titanium case, and you have that kind of vintage faux patina style design that I think really is very wearable as well on the wrist. It's gonna be lightweight, 40 millimeters, I think is the perfect sizing for natural contemporary wear. And as another pick here, I feel like I have to mention these watches, although they do kind of cater more towards the uh, British Air Force, the Spitfire line. These were introduced in Basel 2019, but you're getting new in-house calibers with it. Great heritage style designs. I hopefully will see these calibers go across the entire range of pilot watches. Maybe they're Mark 18s uh, for IWC, would love to see it. But the watch here, looking at that automatic Spitfire, $4,350, case size 39 millimeters, case thickness of 10.8 millimeters, movement is an automatic IWC 32110, water resistance 60 meters, sapphire crystal. These movements, 72 hour power reserve, 2019 Basel World release. And overall, I think these watches do some of the best job in staying true to the classic pilot watch design. Although really kind of showing honor to the British Royal Air Force instead, still certainly fit the bill here. And then finally, we have the IWC big pilot heritage. We're looking at the reference IW501004. Case size 46.2 millimeters, case thickness of 14.4 millimeters. Movement is the automatic IWC 52110 caliber, water resistance of 60 meters and has a sapphire crystal. So this 5200 family of movements was launched in 2015 and is their latest generation of movements. This one coming with a seven day automatic power reserve. And I think for looking at, in terms of course, quality and production, and of course the sizing of the, the actual watches themselves, the movements inside of them. I think this is probably, if you wanna get as close as you can to the original from IWC nowadays without buying the actual original 55 millimeter uh, watches that were issued, these are great choices. And of course, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are other brands that have reinterpretations of these designs. So just to mention a few of them before we close out here, starting with some more affordable pieces with the Orient Aviator, the price range of $130 to $200, Case size of 42 millimeters, thickness of 11.7 millimeters, movement automatic orient 48743, water resistance of 100 meters, crystal, a mineral. This one Japanese made, but no doubt German Flieger inspired. This one coming with a loom filled type B style dial featuring a wearable design and case size. This one coming in several different dial color variations, but if you wanna stay true to many of the originals, opting to go for the black, of course will be best. And I think it's an important thing to note with these watches, I am always criticizing brands for just blowing up watches unnecessarily in terms of size. I think it makes more sense uh, for these watches to be a little bit larger based on their original purpose. But another watch here, a more affordable option is the Citizen Avion. Reference AW136110H. So the first time I actually interacted with this watch was uh, my cousin owned it. He's a pilot. Uh, I actually sold him for a really good price, my Zin 104 uh, a couple years back. He loves it to death. But this watch here, price 100 to 200 dollars, case size of 45 millimeters, thickness of 12 millimeters, movement is an EcoDrive J810, water resistance of 100 meters, and has a mineral crystal. So this will have that gray style dial inspired by mid-century aviation, but like the Orient, Japanese made with German Type B dial design. And for a price around 100 to 200 dollars, could be a good option for a budget-friendly pick. Next, we have Archimede with the Pilot 42 Bronze. So Archimede actually is an affiliated brand with Laco. They're underneath the same ownership. And they are, I'd say, a little bit more daring in terms of, of course, they have uh, watches that are gonna stay true to the original roots of just aviation, Flieger style watches. But instead, they also have some more obscure, and uh, whether it's throwing a GMT hand on something, having bronze cases, and of course, different colors for dials. They kind of scratch that itch if you're somebody that's looking for that. But this watch here comes in with a price of $1,150, case size of 42 millimeters, case thickness of 9.9 .9 millimeters, movement is an automatic ETA 2842, water resistance of 50 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. This watch showcases a classic A style dial, but I encourage those to look more into the offering for this brand, because as I mentioned, I think they're doing some more fun and more daring things with the design. And then two German brands, really high quality brands, pretty much over-constructed, First, the Damasco DH 2.0 and the DH 3.0. Price here, we're looking around $1,200, $1,300. Case size of 40 millimeters, thickness of 14 millimeters. Movement is an automatic ETA 2836 2. Water resistance of 100 meters. Crystal is sapphire. And then in a very similar fashion, we have the Zen 856 coming with a price of $1,860. 
case size of 40 millimeters, thickness of 11 millimeters, movement is an automatic SW301, water resistance of 200 meters, and has a sapphire crystal. So these Damasco and Zinn watches, intentionally built, well constructed, both of these are gonna be scratch resistant cases, bead blasted, sapphire crystals, magnetic field protection, and also I think really interesting interpretations, especially the Zinn here in terms of the layout of this dial design. The Zinn is a limited edition, so you're gonna have a little bit more difficulty in finding this uh, in terms of other watches on the list here, but I had to mention it, I think it's a great uh, reinterpretation of this design. So guys, I hope this video was helpful and giving you kind of an overview, of course, of the history of these types of watches, as well as some brands to look at. There's plenty of other brands that are doing a good job in producing watches and reinterpretations of these designs. Just wanted to focus in on a few, and of course, the history behind them, because I think it's important with just the overall appreciation of them. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also subscribe. 70% of the people that watch my videos actually don't subscribe, so come on guys, help a guy out. Also hit that bell icon so you don't miss the content I'm posting. I post three to four videos a week. You wanna be sure to stay up to date. And finally, if you wanna take your watch to the next level, check out teddyballerstar.com. We have some of the best watch drafts available in the entire industry. Anything from my Teddy Original line all the way up to John Rousseau, 200, $300 straps made to order. So really proud of our offering. And then finally, if you wanna get an iconic piece for yourself, no better place than Bob's watches. Anything from Oris, Tudor, Omega, Rolex to Patek Philippe, they have it available. I love my purchase of my 16570 uh, Rolex Explorer 2. Been wearing it pretty much every day and had a great experience buying through Bob's and I know you will too. And if you use that link in the description, that lets them know that I sent you and it also helps our channel out tremendously. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well and I will see you all very soon.